In this video, I'll be wiring up a 12 to 24 volt power converter that I'll be using to power my Zero Breeze Mark II with my Goal Zero Yeti 1000. And then I'll compare the power consumption between the DC converter and the supplied AC power adapter. There's a link in the description to this particular power converter. But I recommend anyone planning on doing this particular project to do your own research as you never know what you're going to get when you're dealing with inexpensive Chinese electronics. I just picked one off of Amazon that had the least amount of negative reviews, and I'm hoping for the best. In the interest of consistency, since Goal Zero uses Anderson connectors, I've elected to use the same for all of my connections. If you're wondering, this is not an official pair of Anderson power pole crimpers but I found a set of dies in my kit that work well. I'll be powering this converter through the Goal Zero Max Current Cable, and it's important when using these Andersons to make sure that you're crimping the ends on in the right direction so that all of the plugs end up matching in the end. Otherwise, you might have to twist or cross the wires to get the connectors to mate up. And after all that, I put them on upside down. And FYI, if you're going to be buying extra connectors from Amazon, make sure that you're buying from the same supplier. It turned out these were from different suppliers and they would only connect in one orientation, but not the other. So I did go with the 15 amp rated converter and it does have adequately sized wires coming out of it. Larger wires for the 12 volt input and smaller for the 24 volt output as the increase to 24 volts halves the amps. For the cable coming out of the converter and going into the Mark II, I was hoping to be able to use the cord off of my now dead Mark I power cable, but in cutting off the end I found out that uh, it's not that kind of cable. So I scavenged the DC cable I had made for my original Mark I. I didn't need nearly as much length as I did before, and it's always best to keep your wires as short as possible when dealing with DC. As I said in a previous video, the Mark I and the Mark II were wired differently at the plug end, so I had to unwire the Mark I end and solder this wire back on to pins 1 and pin 3, positive and negative. I use the Anderson 45 amp connectors on the 12 volt input side and I'm using the smaller 30 amp connectors on the 24 volt output side. And that's it. I now have an easily removable 12 to 24 volt DC power supply. I found out the DC converter does not draw any power on its own. and was putting out exactly 24 volts. If you can see the screen there, when the Mark II is in standby mode, it's only pulling two watts, 
when powered through a DC converter. Note that these tests inside are all conducted at around a 65 degree ambient temperature in the room and the power consumption will go up as things get hotter and I'll show that at the end of the video. So far so good and the power consumption stabilized at about 118 watts with a Mark II on normal cooling mode and high fan. Switching over to boost mode, it came up to about 122 watts, but I had forgotten that pressing the boost mode button lowers the fan speed automatically for some reason. So you'll see in just a minute here, I remember that and crank the fan speed back up to high. The outlet temperature after about 10 or 15 minutes was about 43 degrees. And after about 15 minutes, I checked all the wires and the converter and nothing was getting noticeably warmer. But the air conditioner is far from struggling at this temperature, so that's expected. And after remembering to turn the fan speed all the way up to high, we got it up to about 140 watts on boost mode. So let's see the difference with the AC power adapter. Right off the bat, you'll see that in standby mode, it pulls about 8 watts compared to the 2 watts on direct DC power. I hadn't noticed this in previous tests, but for some reason when using the AC power converter, the power came up to about 160 watts, dropped down to about 140 watts, and then stabilized right back up to around 150. Not exactly sure why. Switching over to boost mode with the AC power converter, we got it up to about 164 watts. And 13.8 amps. And after about 15 minutes, just like the DC, no considerable rise in temperature with the AC power supply. So you can see here in a side-by-side, -side, there is a considerable difference in the power consumption between straight DC and using an AC power supply. In normal mode with a 65 degree ambient room temperature, we're pulling 114 watts straight DC and 150 watts on AC. And with that difference, the Yeti is estimating almost a two hour difference in estimated runtime. Switching over to boost mode, the numbers got a little closer with 140 watts straight DC and 165 with the AC adapter. And the estimated runtime is now an hour different. So as long as this boost converter keeps putting out 24 volts, I think straight DC is the way to go. Since that initial test, I have been able to get everything installed in a vehicle. And I have been able to do a couple of long-term all-day tests. Well, all-day considering the battery capacity. But I've gotten about four or five hours of almost constant runtime out of the Mark II with a Goal Zero Yeti 1000. We are still in spring conditions, so I estimate the runtime is gonna go down some in the dead of summer. But for right now, it's pulling about 190 watts with a 62 degree AC outlet temperature. It's 95 degrees ambient inside the vehicle, which is all closed up, and a 70 degree outside the vehicle temperature. At these current conditions, I am still very impressed with the Mark II's performance. The air coming out of this was surprisingly colder than the 95 degree ambient temperature inside the vehicle. And for the time I spent in here with it, I didn't even come close to breaking out in a sweat. 
As long as you come into a purchase like this, understanding that an air conditioner of this size could definitely not cool a vehicle or an enclosed space sitting in full sun, because it just doesn't have the cooling capacity to overcome that kind of a heat load, and instead use it just to cool you instead of trying to cool the whole area, I think you'll be just as happy with it as I am.